Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. So I see that our Facebook dropped on us, so I don't have you. But I do still have YouTube this morning. So let's see here for just a moment. All right. But we will continue. So uh, whatever the reason is, we're just going to continue. But it's great to, to uh, for the, all of those, those who are able to join us today by uh, YouTube. And of course, we'll put this up later on Facebook so you'll be able to, to join in with us. And so I'm grateful that the Lord has allowed us to come together one more time. Technology is uh, is what it is, and we don't control all the links to this thing. Uh, so, but we're going to do the best we can with uh, what we have. So, we're grateful to have you join us today, and I'm excited about what God is doing or has done, and will continue to do. Uh, yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's see. Uh, we're getting ready to, uh, he's going to post to my uh, personal page for just a moment. And when she does that, then I'll be able to, I'm just going to kind of paddle around for right now until that's done. And that'll give us uh see what we got here there we go there we go so go to my go to uh, uh, my page if you would there you go pastor Johnson good mornings Delaina praise God Deborah Stevenson Joyce Pittman Reverend Evans good morning Deborah J hey we learned how to work around here now that's good. That's good. Vivian, Tara Lynn, Sharon, bless you, Sharon. Still praying for you and your family. Uh, Sharon lost her uh, sister, uh, Phyllis, had services for her on yesterday. So we're going to keep, want to keep them in prayer. But also remember we had the service yesterday for Sister Sandra Arrington. And want to keep them in prayer as well. Um, Sister Butler, bless you. Good to see you. Natasha, let's see who would I miss here. Deb J, yeah, good morning. Camilla, good morning. Uh, Ivy, good morning. Sister Janet, good morning. So we got people coming on in. If you would, just uh, hit your like button. Let me know that you're there. Thank you, Sister Renee. While you're coming in, join me. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Damien, Chanel, good morning. Good morning. Bless you. Good to have you join us today. Today is the, uh, this is Deborah Johnson, bless you, good morning. This is uh, Martin Luther King uh, weekend celebration. Holiday is tomorrow. Uh, this afternoon at three o'clock, we'll have a, a pastor's conference. It's doing a Martin Luther King, uh, we do this every year, and but we're doing it from Mount Zion today at three o'clock. It'll be a virtual event. So you'll come to, uh, 
come to my page like you did just now at three o'clock and uh, for the uh, for the service from Mount Zion. All right, it's a virtual event, so we'll be about seven eight people there, but uh, it, but it'll be uh, uh, streamed on our Facebook and uh, and YouTube like we've done this morning. Amen. Tracy, good morning. So please keep that in mind. If you would, as we're going to, uh, I'm going to go into the word because I have a word I want to share with you today. If you turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And I'm going to read down to verse 8. Be ye therefore followers, followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, <clears throat> as become its saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no homemonger or unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for the cause of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometime darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. Father, I, I pray now as I come before you people that you would give wisdom, give insight. Use me, Lord, to bless them. Say what you would have said to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So today we want to continue in the third part of this uh, series of Be Like Him. And today our focus is get ready. Get ready. Get ready. This, uh, I come to you in the midst of a whole lot of stuff going on in our, in our world and particularly in our nation. If you... Uh, been watching the news, you know that uh, January 6th, we had the uh, riots on the Capitol. And then uh, just this coming uh, Wednesday will be the inauguration of President-elect Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. But our nation around is on military high alert because there have been uh, claims of that there are going to be armed protests to reject the Biden election and inauguration. Our president has been impeached for a second time and some say one thing and some say another. But the, uh, it's, it's a very confusing time in our nation. And you have believers in Christ on both sides. And so I, I've been asking God to help me to guide us, first of all, to, to help explain how we got here and then to show me how to show us how to do this thing and, and to do it in such a way that you're able to, to to see for sure and know for sure why things are the way they are right now so, so I want to start with this, 
and I and this will help. I know that I know that I have listeners this morning who are believers in Christ. I have people of many different denominations, of many of of, of political parties, Democrats and Republicans. And I have all colors what here this morning, listeners. So, so, so let me approach it this way to help you understand. Here's why we're in such a mess. All right. What, what I hold here is a is a 12 inch ruler. Okay, it's a 12 inch ruler, and it has lines for for measure. 12 inch ruler. Each one of us can take this 12 inch ruler and measure something. If we get it right on the line, if it says it's five inches, each one of us can take this 12 inch ruler and measure it and agree that it's five inches. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, if you're mm -hmm. Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Presbyterian, Lutheran, it, it, it doesn't matter uh, whether you are, who you are, gay, straight, or in between. If we take this ruler that we all will agree on, that's a, that's a standard. We can measure and we all agree, all right? Now, because we don't independently decide, we let this be the standard. This is the word of God, okay? Word of God. 66 books, 39 Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books. And I want to explain this. How can two people read the same scriptures and one comes away pro-Biden, another comes away pro-Trump, and yet both claim to be reading the same scriptures, right? Now, how can you read the same scriptures and have so different views about things, but we're reading the same scriptures, all right? Now, let me explain that. Let me explain how that happens, all right? Now, you might need some water with this, right? right? Get, get you some water if you need to. Here, here, here's why that happens. Here's why that happens. It depends on the view by which you read scripture. Listen. If three people read the Holy Scriptures from a human point of view, you will get three views and contradictions. You want to write this down. If three people read the Holy Scriptures from a human point of view, you'll get three views and contradictions. What I mean by contradictions is that you take a particular scripture and that might support your view, but you'll find other scriptures that contradict what you just what you're sitting on, what you're claiming. Right? All right. However. When three people read the scriptures from God's point of view, mm -hmm. you'll get one view and zero contradictions. Whether you're doing what, so if you read this passage in the Old Testament and you say it's, but you read it from God's perspective, you won't find a scripture in any of the other 39 books or New Testament books that are contradict what you just said, what you're just standing on, because you're doing it from God's point of view. Okay. Right? Our problem is, is that we read, we have been, we have been, we have become experts at reading the scriptures from the human point of view. And the result is all of these splinters and splits and, and divisions. For instance, let me just give you one of them. We're going to go get back to uh, uh, this, this first one. And, and you already know this verse if you've been in church for a while. 
Matthew 16, 18 says, Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build y'all's church. No, upon this rock, I will build my church. So, so if you look at the church, uh, we have a lot of people on here from Mount Zion Church, church I pastor. If you look at Mount Zion Church and say Mount Zion is my church, then you're going to often have contradiction because you're going to look at the church from my point of view. But if you look at the church as his church, help me, Lord Jesus. If it's his church, then that settles who is going to be a part of his church. But if it's my church, you got to come by me before you get in. And I got to prove you. And I got to sign off on you. And I got to, you know, I might not want you in there because it's my church. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you have happening. You got people reading the scriptures, but they're reading it from the human point of view. And the result is you got all kinds of contradictions and splits and divisions. That's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so I want to guide us through some things. Are you ready? Here we go. Here we go. We have spent a lot of time, a lot of time, asking the question, who am I? Why am I here? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What's my purpose? That's what we've done. That's what we've done. And really, I now understand that's the wrong question. This, this, the question should be, is who is God? Okay. Let me tell you why. God created man in his likeness and image. And again, God created man in his likeness and image. So, when I get to know who God is... I know who I am because he made me to be like him. Duh. Yeah. He made us to be like him. So, so, so the better I know him, the better I know who I am. But if I start with the question of who am I, then I'm seeking to define myself independent of God. Right? Now, now let's do this. Let's do this. If God then made me to be like him, then he becomes my model to watch. He becomes my model to observe. I'm to observe him. I'm to see who he is and what he does. And then based on who he is, it orders my steps. It orders how I do things because I'm seeking to be who he is. But the question, the problem is, we have been so hooked up in reading the scriptures based on a human point of view that we've been looking at human models. And the human models, looking at the human models, is what got us all jacked up. All right? Now, I didn't do this because, because I know who I got on here. And so, and I've been preaching to you for some time. And so you understand my spirit as I, as I say this. So the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. And, and of course, we, uh, this, this weekend, we have the Martin Luther King celebration. And you know that Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement was, was about uh, integration and about access to, to things of which we had grown up in this nation by saying, Certain thing was for white folks, and certain thing was for black folks. All right, uh, you, you, certain thing you couldn't do because of the color of your skin, right? And it almost appeared like it, that that integration was saying that we want to be like them. And white folks were saying, "No, you can't come over here because this is ours. This 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 is mine." And and so and so the so the integration idea or plan or or movement is to say we all should have access but the question is who whose is it because if you say it's mine 
is, is this my nation? Then that means I got to prove other people to get in and so forth. But if the, if the Constitution says who this nation belongs to, then the Constitution becomes the model, excuse me, the standard by which we operate from. Now, now, now check this out. Let, let's, let's do this right away. Right away. So the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. And those who are crystal diamonds, uh, whites, listen to me. The abolishing of slavery would have had zero impact on your life. It, it was, it had nothing to really, you know, you wouldn't even know it. It doesn't matter. But to people of color, black people, the abolishing of slavery had tremendous impact because it impacted our future. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Here the last few uh, few days, we've been hearing a lot of talk about white supremacy. White supremacy. To, to every white person, listen to me, every crystal diamond, listen to me. Now consider this. If there was a crowd of, say, 300 white supremacists gathered, you, as a, as a white person, crystal diamond, could get out of your car and walk through the midst of the white supremacists, and they would not say any racial slur towards you. You could walk right through them, go right on the other side, no, no problem. But as a person of color, if you tried to do that, it would be a different experience, right? Now, so the question is, how do we bring people together? How do we do that when you got people on both sides reading the same scriptures? Mm -hmm. First of all, we're reading the scriptures from the human point of view. But we want to read the scriptures from the God point of view. Mm -hmm. If you, When you read the scriptures from the human point of view, you read it looking for black folks, white folks. But when you read it from God point of view, you'll find that God never, ever divides people by their color. Amen. It's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not there. So, so if we read it from the God perspective, you see that this division is caused by us and not by God. Amen. 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 Now, so, so here's been the here's been the challenge. Here's been the challenge. I'll go back again. Now listen, now, ain't no way to ain't no way to preach this without going across what I got to cover now. So, when the when the Thirteenth Amendment abolish slavery. The question the slaves had to decide is who do we now use as a model of how to be free? Who sets that, who sets the standard for freedom? I'm 65, we turned 66 this year. And we've gone through a number of, of models. And yet we're still dealing with the same stuff. So I started to raise the question. Maybe we got this thing wrong. But how? So what I recognize is that how we have viewed church. Remember I said that what we have in America, you got two views of church and both of them is from a human perspective, not a God perspective. So you have black folks who look at the church in terms of churchanity. And really, the church has been the center of the black community and, and black folks that go to church, we're churchy. All right, we're churchy. So you got folks who, well, I don't know when, I'm, when the church is going to get open again so I can go back and get my praise on. All right, that, that all sounds good. But, but, but the Lord did not develop a building as a church. The church is a body. All right. I ain't done. So then you have a number of white believers who look at the church as an extension into the state so that they think of the nation and their and their faith as being one and the same. So that's that's why you got this this divide. And so so they look at the nation as 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 an extension of who they are in church. And so you even had some pastors said if you don't vote this way, you're not a Christian. All right, but now watch this. That's because we read the scriptures from the human perspective. And when you hear someone say that this nation is the greatest nation, that's 
you're imposing from a human perspective. Go this. Go to Deuteronomy verse 6. Deuteronomy 4, verse 6. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 6. Deuteronomy 4, verse 6. Six. Keep the God uh, verse 5. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgment, even as the Lord, even as the Lord my God commanded. This is Moses talking. That you should that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Was promised a promised land. Why? Keep that do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding sight of the nations shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Verse 7, for what nation is there so great who God has, ha, ha, uh, who, who has God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? So now it's talking about Israel being a great nation. Now go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37. What you know about Ezekiel 37 is a lot of people you've heard preachers preach about the Valley of Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of preachers are preachers talking about you know, the ankle bone connected to the knee bone, the knee, well, ankle to the leg bone. So forth. And so they talk about the, the, the Valley of Dry Bones. And so what often happens is, is they miss the whole point. What happens in Ezekiel 37 God takes the prophet, set him down in a valley of dry bones. He says, can these bones live? He said, you know, Lord, he breathed upon the, on the bones and they become a mighty army. And then what he prophet to do, he said, this is the house of Israel. Let me, let's go back to uh, uh, Ezekiel 37. Verse 11. Go back 37 and verse 11. Look what he says. Oh, so much you get this right. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our holes were cut off from our parts. So, so he's 37 is about Israel. Says he has them to take two sticks and join them together. Verse seven, take two sticks. Well, let's look at verse. Moreover, son of man, take thee one stick. This is thirty-seven sixteen. Take thee one stick, write upon it for Judah, for the children of Israel, his companion. Another stick and write it for Joseph, the stick of it. The the stick. For all the house of Israel, his companion, join them one to another, and they shall be in thine hand. Because Israel was divided into two separate, two nations. Okay? And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, What, what thou wilt thou not show us me? And so he explained to them is that God is going to take them and join them together as. And David will be with them as one nation. Now, I want to go down to verse 25 and read this. And they shall be the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, but dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. But David shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them be an everlasting covenant with them, I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary 
in the midst of them forever. My tabernacle shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. So the greatest nation is not the United States of America. The greatest nation is Israel. I can't change that. And so the greatest nation, now why are they great? God said, because I'm going to put my sanctuary in the midst of them. Who is he? He's a God who made everything. And the creator says, that's the greatest nation. Not because they're so great, but because I chose them to be the voice to tell all of the nations who I am. Mm -hmm. So when we say that our nation is the greatest nation on earth, we're trying to say that God has changed his mind. He has not changed his mind. Israel is still the greatest nation. Mm -hmm. Not because of military power. Oh, no. Oh, no. Military power is not is not what makes one great. God said, because I put my sanctuary that you I put myself in the midst of you to 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 share who I am to the nations. Right? So that is on that base. So when you read the scriptures from the God perspective, you know that there's only one nation. That's the greatest nation on earth. That's Israel. Now, what about the other nations? It is true. Uh, Psalm 33, 12 says, bless is the nations whose God is the law. All right. So God will bless us as a nation when we when we accept that, that God Almighty is our God. But it doesn't make us the greatest nation on earth. No, no. God, see, God chose, y'all help me here. God chose Israel to be the light to the nations. But they failed at it. He, so what God did, he brought his son into the world through that nation. And then Jesus comes and says, I am the light of the world. All right? All of the, if you follow me, you won't walk in darkness. So we come to Jesus and he saves us. He established the church and it is the church now that is the light to the world, not the nation. The church is. We're not children of light. We should walk as children of light. So the church is the body. The church is the light to the nations. And we're going to remain that until he comes and takes the church out in the rapture. Then he will start to deal with Israel again as a nation as he, clue, as he brings things to a final conclusion. Now that's the scriptures. That's the scriptures. Now, so I, I said, Lord, we are to be like you. But how do we do that? Because we've been trying to be like other people. I don't care what color you are, who you are. We've been trying to be like them. <laughs> Years ago, they had this thing, well, be like Mike. All right? No, no. You, you don't want to be like Mike. You want to be like him. Because, you see, see, there are things that go off in your life. There are things that happen in your life. And you want some ex you need some ex extra help to get through life. All right? Yes. So, so what I so I said, Lord, help us now to understand how do we be like you? Yes. And that brought me to this Ephesians 5 1. And then he says, walk as children of light, and, and observing what Jesus said that we're to let our light shine that men may see. Our work, not our worship. And that brought me again to the book of Daniel when I saw how Daniel was able to, to, to thrive and be at the top of his game in the midst of continual political upheaval. He, he remained at the top. And I, and I caught up that Daniel had a, had a spirit of excellence. And I said, Lord, who defines excellence? Mm -hmm. Of course, what I call excellent and what you call excellent and what somebody else calls excellent, they're two different things. So, so, the, so the point is, we want to say, well, Lord, what do you call excellence? So we, we go to Genesis chapter 1. Okay. 
and we began to look at the creation event. And, and we note that each day when God does something, he finished working and he says, good. So if God calls it good, it's good. All right. So I prepared a graphic for the days of creation that will help us get this in our mind. And then we're going to focus. We're going to laser in on focus on one particular day. But, but I want you to get this part right now. So 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 there's seven there, there, there are seven days involved, but I have this graphic, and what I've used is a, uh, a limo, and I've put around the limo the six days of work in creation. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to look at the limo, and you see, I want you to start with a, the limo and look at the, the four in the back. You see the, the superstar mm -hmm. always sits in the back, right? And the reason I want you to focus on that, when you think of the limo, I want you to see the superstar in the back and see the four stars. And for that's really day four. Day four, God creates the sun, moon, and stars. That's day four. So now let's go to day one. So day one is the very front of the limo. Okay? That's the light. Day one, God divides the light from the day and that's the first day. That's day one. Day two is the top of the limo. And you see two bottles of water. Day two, God divides the water from the water. He creates a firmament and separates the waters above from the waters beneath. And I use two water bottles because what, what, what these are, these are called memory devices. It's just enough to, to hit to give you the idea, okay, that's what this is about. So day two, he divides the water from the water. Day three is the driver's seat, is the, the uh, driver. And you see the three bananas. You see the three trees. You got a fruit tree, a palm tree, and just a regular tree. And then you see the three flowers and the grass. What happened on day three is God separates the water from the water, excuse me, water from the land, and on the land, he puts vegetation, trees, uh, fruit trees, herbs, all, all kind of vegetation on day three. And then we'll look at day four again, which you already anchored it. That's the day he puts the sun, moon, and stars. Day five is he puts the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. As you see, the, this limo is powered by the, the manure from five goldfish. And that's what I want you to keep that in mind. So, you know, day five is the fish. Now, he made more than goldfish. He got whales, every, every creature in the sea he created on day five. Now, day six, you see a man, woman on the elephant, and you see the lions. Now, count the lions. You see that there are six lions. Day six, God created all the land animals. Every insect, every bug, every creeping thing. And then last, he made man. And then day seven, God rested from his labor. Now, I want you to I want you to get this and hold it in your mind. Once you can 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 that's the way he got it. All right. Now check this out. Check this out. When I when I considered this, I created a what I call a be like him calendar. Mm -hmm. And the be like him calendar is uh, following the first Sunday. <clears throat> first thing God does is says, "Let there be light," and separates the light from the day. Mm -hmm. So so following the first Sunday is the declutter week. You want to flag stuff. You want to know where stuff is because if you're hunting for things you're in the dark yeah. so that's that's from the first week mm -hmm. from the second week remember he divides the water from the water and he makes space he creates room by which he he is going to create everything else so from the second sunday is our make room make space a uh, place for everything week mm -hmm. and then from the third sunday which is what we're going to cover today he creates the food supply he gets ready to receive 
uh, all the animals and all the birds and, and man, he creates a food supply on, on day three. That's the, what I call the get ready. And then following the fourth Sunday is the, is it, he, uh, day four is the sun, moon, and star for seasons and times. So, so following the fourth Sunday is a review and preview, refresh and replace. And then following the fifth Sunday is when we take a bird's eye view because every fifth Sunday gives us a glimpse to the next season, which is a three months look. Now, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is we wanna we wanna zero in on day three. All right, because this is third Sunday, and it's our get ready time. Now notice God on day three separates the water from the land and then puts plants, trees, creates trees, fruit trees, vegetation, herbs yielding seed. This is on day three. Now, cause see, in, in two days from now, well, two days from now, the fish are gonna show up and the birds are gonna show up and they're gonna need something to eat, right? Three days from now, on day six, all the land animals are going to show up and man is going to show up and they're going to need something to eat. Notice, God creates the food supply before he brings in the people that are going to eat the stuff. Yes. Yes. I mean, think about it. How often do we do stuff contrary to that? Otherwise, if God had created man first, man would have to sleep in the guest room or uh, so they put an air mattress around the throne of God. So after you sleep there, I get your place ready. Hello, uh, or in a, you know, angel uh, put put Adam up in the in the guest room until I get get Earth ready for. No, no, no. God got all of that ready first mm -hmm. before He made the man. Mm -hmm. And so watch this, y'all. Watch this. When I looked at this, I began to realize. So remember, we, we want to be like Him. So we want to begin to develop a mindset towards being like him. And that is uh, preparing or getting ready for something before we need it. Watch this. This is God. But let's look at Jesus. Go to Luke 22, verse 7. Luke 22, verse 7. Luke 22, verse 7. This is Jesus. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he, and he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare for us the Passover that we may eat. Verse 9. And they say unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? All right. So that since they asking him, it would mean they don't know. But look at verse 10. He says, behold, he says to them, behold, when you enter to the city, there, shall meet a, there you shall meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And you shall say unto the good man of the house, the master says unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I will eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished there make ready and they went and found as he had said unto them and they made ready and when the hour was come he sat down and the 12 apostles with him so so the passover is coming and they need to eat so jesus says to peter and john go prepare for us and they said uh well lord where are we going? What 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 I do? He said, here's what you do. When you go in the city, you'll meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him to the house. And when you get in there, you say to the good man, says, the master says, Where show me the guest room? And he'll show you a large upper room. Watch this. A large upper room furnished. And there make ready. Now, what that tells us is this. The disciples didn't know, but that tells us that Jesus had already made arrangements. Before he needed the thing. Hello? Mm -hmm. 
God makes arrangements. He prepares and plans ahead before he needs it. So that means we want to begin to develop that kind of mind. It's taken ahead. Now, 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 since I know most of you are by Zoom and and uh, and Face and uh, YouTube, you can do this without embarrassing yourself. All right, here we go. So, so how many of you have ever wished you could win the lotto, <laughs> the Powerball, the Mega Million, that you could just, just you know, you know, we ain't nobody looking buy one of them Powerball tickets, and 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 the announcement is you got thirty three hundred million dollars. Now, don't raise no hand. Just raise an eyebrow. Just raise an eyebrow. <laughs> just raise an eyebrow. All right. Now, now let me show you. Let me show you how what we've been doing is so contradictory. If you were to come into millions of dollars Monday, would you be ready to receive it? Think about it. Because we see God perspective is is that you prepare before you do the thing. So that means if I'm, if I'm, a, if are you prepared to receive millions? Do you already have at least a bank account? Hello? And the bank account you have, do you actually balance your checkbook? Or do you just check the balance? I mean, do you actually fine tune and keep up with the finances? Or do you just check in to see what how much money you got left? What bank would you use? What accounting would you use? How would you invest the money? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What would you do with 10 folks who all of a sudden are going to be knocking on your door claiming, hey, cuz, let me hold something. Hello? What, what, have, you, have, you, have you determined what you're going to do? How, how you, I mean, there's a whole lot involved. My point is, is you, if you're not ready to receive the money, then you won't be prepared for it. It don't have to be millions. Whatever it is, you got to get ready to receive it. So we talk about get ready. So if you if you want to get ready to receive money, then you want to begin to prepare now to be an accountant, a steward of the money. How do you keep up with it? Spreadsheets, so forth. How do you, you want to begin to get ready in that fashion now? Get ready now. All right. I know I'm all in somebody's Kool-Aid. I realize that. And I intend to be. Because we have to get ready before the thing happens. And I'm not talking about doing a lot. I'm just saying you want to be ready to handle finances before you have finances to handle. Otherwise, you won't have it. God shows us that the first step is preparation. And, I'm, and boy, I'm just scratching the surface today because what we find here is God prepares in such a way. Watch this. He doesn't put up sacks of food. He has a renewable supply. So when the birds and fish and man shows up, they're going to eat the fruit, but then the tree is going to replenish itself. Hello? It's one thing if you got 20 baskets. See, see we used to, we used to being able to supply from wages. But God is saying, yeah, I want you to be a supply from fruit. Because if you got 20 baskets, and every day you eat a basket, your inventory keeps dropping. Hello? But but God said, oh, my, y'all, y'all, come on. We, we got 12 months to deal with this. But but if it's a fruit supply and the tree keeps replenishing, every time you eat, another grows back. So, so God is going to show us, y'all, how we operate in such a way that we supply in such a way that when the mouths show up, we can feed them without getting in trouble. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I need to close with this, y'all, because my time is up. Look, go to, go to Revelation 13 and verse 8. Revelation 13 and verse 8. And we're going to close it with this. Revelation 13 and verse 8. I'll give you time to turn there. Revelation 13 and verse 8. Give me time to get there. Give me time to write it down. 13 and 8. This is our closing verse. Look at this. Talking about thinking ahead. 
and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. What do you mean, preacher? Before God made man, he planned before he made man to redeem man. Hello? <laughs> in other words, before God made man, he knew man was going to mess up. So he planned his redemption before he ever made him. Jesus coming into the world, he's not some last minute thought. God knew man was going to mess up. So he said, I'm going to go ahead and plan right now how I'm going to redeem this man I made. And he does it before he makes it. God said, that's what I, so, so now, oh Lord, Lord Jesus. So, so God, see, he, he slays the lamb before he makes us. So that once he makes us and we mess up, he said, I already planned for that. I already planned for you to take the wrong route. I already planned for you to act a fool and get off in left field. But I'm going to redeem you because I planned for that in the very beginning, y'all. And he says, I made you in my very likeness and image. And I don't plan to fail. Yes. God doesn't plan to fail. Yes. That's why he's able to put a Judas on Jesus' team and Judas seeks to betray Jesus. And Jesus already knew that. And in spite of Judas, Jesus succeeded. Victory is mine. So, so we're going to, oh, ooh, I'm trying to stay in my chair, y'all. So, so we take this day three. Take this day three. And know that God plans ahead. Well, let me give you a very practical here as we close. Very practical. You take the day three and just think ahead. Whatever is due on day three, this is, this is Sunday. Whatever is due Wednesday, Get it ready today. Whatever to do Thursday, get it ready Monday. Whatever to do Friday, get it ready Tuesday. So you want to begin to get stuff ready. And the point is, you want to eliminate last minute stuff. It, whatever you're going to wear Wednesday, take a look at it today because, and the Lord showed me this one. I go, oh my God. See, see a lot of times stuff you're going to wear Wednesday, you don't check it until Wednesday. But if you check it today, you might find out, oh, there's a button missing. Oh, there's a stain. I meant to get that stain out. So you want to check it beforehand. You're preaching good now, Pastor. So, so he says, if it were, so, so Daniel had this spirit of wisdom and excellence. And now I'm beginning to understand we're, we're not trying to model Daniel. We're trying to model God. So do a look ahead. Whatever's due Wednesday, check it today. Whatever due Thursday, get it ready on Monday. You got a report that's due. Get it ready early. So we're never in this last minute crunch because the plan beforehand is to be like him. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift, I lift every listener to you now, Lord. Yes, sir. Draw them close to you. Show us, Lord, how to be like you. And as we do this, we all become one on the same page, being like you, knowing that you will provide and supply everything we need. Have your way in our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you, if you if you've never given your life to Christ and the day he speaks to you, then this is the day you do so. Email me at ourhelpmountzion at gmail.com. And we will, we will pray with you. We'll guide you. We'll baptize you. We'll do whatever we need. Send you to another, uh, wherever you are. I don't know where you're calling from or where you're emailing from. But I will help Mount Zion and we'll guide you of what to do for the next step. Please, my brothers and sisters, 
take this message and listen to it again and again. Now, next Sunday, we're going to do the next one, which will be uh, it's, it's, a, it's a review preview at the end of the month. But this become our calendar, our monthly cycle for the year 2021 is to be like him. And that means everyone who's on this service, regardless of who you are, regardless of your political party, regardless of your color, we're going to find we're not going to try to be like them. We're going to try to be, we're going to aim to be like him. And that's how we're going to rise above everything. Here's a part, here's a, here's a reason. Because he's the only one who can part water, meet us in the fire, and make lions behave, and make coronavirus leave us alone. Amen, amen. 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 So that's why we want to be like him. Continue, thank you for continuing supporting the ministry here at Mount Zion Church. Uh, those who are given by PayPal, Venmo, uh, bringing bringing it by to the secure drop box or even mailing to 1501 6th Avenue here in East Smolin. Amen. Amen. Church, I love you. I love you, saints. I love you all who've gathered from all over the place. Wherever you are, remember, this week, get ready. This is the first, first installment. There are many layers of getting ready. You want to get ready with information, skill, people. There's a lot of things we want to do in terms of get ready. Get ready. Oh, I didn't cover this one before you called. You remember Jesus had to pass over? He got ready to die. Question, are you did you are you prepared for dying? If you died, was your family got to fumble around and try to figure it out? Or have you made the arrangements so that when it comes your day, all they got to pick up the papers and do this because you've already made preparations in advance? Hello? Amen. Mm -hmm. Everybody gonna die. So let's get ready. And you get ready for your crossing by believing in Jesus Christ. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Till next time, God give us grace. Join us right back here. And of course, it's afternoon at 3 o'clock for the Martin Luther King celebration. God bless you. Love you, love you. Take care.